My Stirling single, part 41, modifying the water piping underneath the tender to allow connection to a pair of live steam injectors. The first thing to do is to point out which pipe does what. The quarter inch pipe is for the axle pump's water feed, and the pipe below it, which is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, is the axle pump water bypass, which returns the water to the tank, relative to how much the water bypass valve is opened. The top pipe with the loop in it is the hand pump's water outlet, and this long piece of pipe has had a piece of quarter inch diameter pipe silver soldered on the end of it, possibly just to allow for a larger union nut. I'm going to modify this because the union nut that I want to use is for 3 16 pipe and it's 5 16 by 32. The water fittings underneath the tender are commercial Plumber's Supplies BSP fittings. And it was when I was about to undo one of these nuts I noticed something. One of my 4 inch backhoe spanners opens a little bit wider than the other. In this close up you can see that they are quite different. The one on the right is the old one. I bought this in the early 80s. This is a newer one that was sent to me by a kind viewer from Sweden. The quality of both of them appears to be about the same, but they are quite different. The old one is called a Barco Ergo 8069. And when I turn this earlier spanner over, it says invented by Barco on the other side. These adjustable spanners are a really good quality product. Quite a few of the people that I know who run miniature steam locomotives will have one of these in their pocket for emergency use. Sometimes there just isn't the time to rummage through a box of spanners for the correct size. For instance, if any of your steam fittings become loose or the water level's low, maybe you need to quickly change an injector, well, having a barco in your pocket makes it easy. This is some kind of BSP thread. After all these years, I still find the sizing of BSP threads to be a bit odd. For instance, a quarter BSP thread does not refer to the diameter of the thread. That's it for BSP threads for the moment. I've mentioned quite a lot about them over the years in past videos. If you feel the need to find out a lot more about BSP threads, you can always type BSP threads into the search engine known as Google. I intend to soft solder some fittings on the end of these pipes and here, in readiness for this, although I'm not doing it in this episode, I'm cleaning up the end using some Scotch-Brite. This tender's a bit of a masterpiece, the riveting on the side is just incredible and it's very well soft soldered together. The only thing about this tender that I find a little bit odd is that the mounting holes in the tank to secure the frame to the tender tank are not bushes, they are threaded holes inside the tank itself and go all the way into the water space. Luckily, in my stock of spares, I do have some stainless steel 2BA hexagon bolts. And with a bit of Loctite 542, I think these will successfully hold the tank onto the frames, but I'm not ready to do that yet. I need to mount two injector water valves somewhere in this area on the tender. They don't stick up above the footplate like I'm showing here. They hang down below it, using two lock nuts. I don't drill the holes for these yet, because I need to know exactly where the tender frame finishes. Very soon I will be reassembling the frame, and before I do that I will offer it up to the tank and make a mark at the edge of the frame. Once these two water valves are mounted in position, they will allow for water adjustment to the injectors. These valves are for 532nd pipe, the simple reason being that I think they look more in scale. Once I fit these valves, if I find that they restrict the water flow to the injector too much, I will fit the next size up. When I turn the tender tank back over, I can see a faint mark. I presume this to be where the main frames end, but I don't want to make a mess of it, so I'll wait until I try the frames in place. The first thing I'm going to do is modify this arrangement. I've chopped the pipe and using the existing piece of pipe, I'm going to silver solder a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe into the other end. Notice I'm cleaning the inside of the pipe using a needle file. In this clip, I'm applying the flux to the inside of the larger pipe and to the outer part of the smaller diameter pipe. 
and I've just noticed that this piece of silver solder is much thinner than the stuff I normally use. I'll give it a try and see what it's like. I think it's going to be a bit too thin. As usual, even with this thin piece of silver solder, I'm applying too much, but at least it should be a secure joint. This is the outlet pipe from the hand pump, so it will be under quite a lot of pressure when it's in use. After the silver soldering, using a piece of Scotch-Brite, I thoroughly cleaned the end of the pipe, and the first thing to go on the pipe is the union nut, followed by the union cone. I then took the pipe into the outer part of the workshop, applied some flux, silver soldered it, and here I'm dropping it in my acid bath. The next thing to look at is a suitable water feed for the pair of injectors, and I'm going to take the injector feed from this quarter of an inch diameter pipe that supplies water to the axle pump. All I need to do is fit one of these. It's a four-way connector from PM Research. I re-threaded this special fitting at each side to accept 5 sixteenths by 32 union connectors. I was going to use this thing that I found, it's some sort of a gas fitting. But I try not to do this, I prefer to stick to the ME series of threads. I've cut the pipe and I'm about to silver solder this fitting onto the pipe. I will of course remove the unions first. In this clip I've applied the flux and it's ready to go. After silver soldering the part onto the pipe in the outer part of the workshop, this is what the pipe and the fitting look like, and shortly after filming this, I drop the whole thing into my acid bath. Even though the acid that I use is Kilrock K Kettle D Scaler, after 24 hours of sitting in the bath, this part should be fairly clean. The last thing to do is to try and remove this hammerite paint that's in the top of the tender. I've poured some cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner and I'm trying to remove the paint using that but it's very tenacious stuff this, I think it is hammerite paint and it's been on there a long time. I found a 12 inch steel rule more effective at removing the paint than the paintbrush but anyway I'll just leave it overnight and see what it's like in the morning. As this powerful solvent is in the inner part of the workshop I think it's time for me to leave. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.